Hello, my friends, and welcome back. A lot of allegations are made during wars, and both sides, as I always say, exaggerate, you know, maximize, minimize information, um, depending on how that fits uh, their narrative and war awe efforts. In this case, uh, we have an article uh, coming from the Ukrainians and directed uh, towards the Russians. And it's about Azovstal steel plant, and the Ukrainians allege that uh, the Russians are using illegal weapons, uh, weapons that were banned, and that is um, the ones that use white phosphorus. So uh, let's see what's going on here. So we have uh, an uh, article from Ukrainska Pravda from May 15th, 2022, and this is the title, Advisor to Mariupol Mayor. Russian troops have dropped phosphorus or incendiary bombs on Azovstal still works. Petro Adryushchenko, advisor to the mayor of Mariupol, has reported that Russia's troop, Russian troops have deployed either phosphorus or incendiary ammunition on Ukrainian soldiers defending the Azovstal still works in Mariupol. And I'm quoting from Mr. Adryushchenko. Mariupol Azovstal, new attack from land, sea and air. Yesterday the occupiers deployed incendiary or phosphorus bombs against, yes, I deployed, yeah, against Mariupol defenders for the first time. We will let experts determine the exact type of ammunition deployed. The occupiers claim that they used 9M22C incendiary projectiles. Their burning temperature reach temperature reach reaches 2000 to 2500 uh, Celsius degrees degrees Celsius. They are almost impossible to put out. Uh, details according to Adrioshchenko. This was hell on earth at Azovstal. It is incredible that our defend, defenders are still holding up. We owe them a debt we will never be able to repay. The thing is, uh, if it's illegal, they will find out and our band and um, go from there. It says here that um, background, you know, the background, the city of Mariupol is located in the south of Ukraine on the coast of the Azov Sea. It has been under Russian siege since 1st of March, Ukrainian soldiers defending Mariupol, National Guard, the Azov Regiment slash Battalion, Marines, Border Guards and police officers, and I would add some other uh, volunteers and maybe, maybe, maybe it could be some mercenaries, maybe it could be, maybe it could be some uh, really uh, military personnel uh, belonging to other countries. Um, so they have been encircled and blockaded by the Russian troops at the Azov plant since late April. So they are calling on the world to help rescue them. That's sure. The civilians were evacuated from Azovstal as a week ago. ago. Russia continues to oppose all measures that would make the evacuation of Ukrainian soldiers possible. They don't oppose all measures. Just come out. Just come out. Surrender. That's one. So it's not all. If you have one, that negates the all. Anyway, and then even Turkey, even Turkey is prepared to evacuate them by sea and to guarantee their non-participation in combat action in Ukraine. As I said, they will all become peasants and they will work the land with the little, you know, uh, farms and with children. You know, kind of like um, um, if you saw that movie Gladiator, Russell Crowe movie, I think it's from 2000, like that. He just wanted to come home after he was a general and he fought a lot. He just wanted to take his, you know, earth in his hand and smell it and just be a family man and mend his uh, grapevines and the crop. Yeah, okay. Movies. Nearly 600 wounded soldiers remain in Azovstal bunkers. Now, I'm sorry, I know that it was 36, then there were, yesterday were, so 36 were like two days ago, uh, 60 were yesterday, and now it's 600. 
he would say, yeah, yeah, but you see the Russians and I, it, it intensified their attacks. Could be, but it's kind of like weird, don't you think? I just noticed the number, okay? So don't uh, <clears throat> be so uh, harsh with me. All right, remain in Azov South bunkers without access to medicine and food and unsanitary condition. The Ukraine government is trying to arrange the evacuation of at least 60 most serious, seriously wounded soldiers. So we got seriously and we got wounded. Okay, got that? So uh, <coughs> we, uh, the Russians uh, have no reason to get them out, but whatever. They want to come out nevertheless dead or alive. Now it says here the, the new voice of Ukraine, they said, another uh, Ukrainian outlet, intercepted Russian conversations suggest use of banned ammunition. So um, this is uh, what they say that they might use uh, the ammunition in uh, Azovstal or wherever in Donbass. It says here that on May 14, Russian, Russia used white phosphorus. So they already know they use it right here. Bombs against the Ukrainian uh, rebound at Azovstal still uh, planned in Mariupol, according to city authorities. Well, that's according, that's allegations as this and that. We'll find out, right? We will find out. Um, the thing with this is uh, um, not use it. And I, why would they use it? Why would you up it like that? Um, everything was thrown to this, uh, to the invading army. Uh, that they rape children, that they kill civilians, that they rape women, that they abuse children, that they destroy uh, uh, you know, civilian households or targets. Uh, they, they are monsters. They put people in concentration camps where they, they're they like Second World War, that they don't care for human lives, that they use uh, uh, banned weapons. What else? I'm not saying it's impossible. It's a war. It's very possible. It's very possible. But I'm saying when you up the allegations to such a de degree, degree, you can go higher than that. How high can you go? Atomic bomb? Uh, what experiments on people? Probably this will be experiments on people. They get them the Ukrainians and they change genetically and they do all kinds of medical experience, uh, experiments. That's gonna be probably the top of the top. Well, I don't know. They're gonna start uh, engaging in cannibalism. They're gonna start eating Ukrainians or they're gonna start. I don't know. They go. Oh, the gulags. That's another thing because they keep saying like the first step. Uh, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians were taken taken in, in, in Russia. Why would you want to take them? I don't want to take, let's say, the enemy on my territory that doesn't love me, right? I mean, those hundreds of thousands of people that I take into my territory, they don't want to love me. If they're Ukrainian, they, Ukrainians, they will hate me, right? Because obviously I invaded their country. So what's the purpose? Can be only one, to make them work, all right? Slaver, slave labor, right there. So all these things go on so many, so many accusations. It's not even uh, allegations, it's accusations. It's just, uh, uh, you know, um, that's how they want to do it. And I don't know what's going to be next. As I said, maybe as I, medical experiments and uh, gulags. <laughs> I don't know what else, because they did everything. Cannibalism. What else could be worse than all that? Because they, they already... We were told that they did it. And besides that, the Ukrainians did not do anything. Can you believe that? It's not that I'm, oh, Russians, oh, Ukrainians, no. But it's impossible for a, any army on this planet to not make mistakes. And we are human and we make a lot of mistakes. And under that kind of pressure, we make the same mistakes, I would say under those circumstances. I'm not defending, not condoning these kind of things. You know, like, oh yeah, yeah, do No, it's just war and history uh, provides um, examples, numerous examples for the armies that are considered saint armies. So I'm not gonna go into that. Uh, it's just for you to look and I'm pretty sure you already uh, have that information. You already have it. So thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart. Look for the truth and be just. See you in a moment. We got much more.